These are 10 AI musketeers. And these are 10,000 AI zombies these musketeers will have to fight. I have trained them for more than 100 hours in continuous battles and at the end made them fight each other in different environments, so let's find out who is stronger in this 10th episode of Epic AI Wars. But before we start, here is a quick intro on how it all here is a quick intro on how it all works. We will have two opposing teams, Pogo Musketeers and Pogo Zombies. Our agents in both teams will have to learn how to dominate their opponents using reinforcement learning. While the name sounds complicated, the idea is rather simple and is similar to how training a rat works. That makes you, Pogo, a filthy rat. The agents will get rewarded for doing good things, like murdering their opponents in cold blood, while being punished for their wrong actions, such as um, getting unalived. Yeah, imagine a place where if killed, your dad ass would also have to pay in a fine, lol. No, that would be ridiculous. Oops. Anyways, both agents are able to move in any direction, such as forwards, backwards, left, right, and even horizontally. And while you're proudly writing your comment about how dumb I am for saying horizontally instead of diagonally, I want you to know that I did hours on hours of extensive research. Mm, yeah, I basically asked ChatGPT, but guess what? It says use horizontal if the movement is straight along the ground from one side to the other without changing elevation. And my soldiers are not changing elevation. I don't have any flying agents now, do I? I don't see any... Um, maybe that one. And that one. Ah, that doesn't count. I'm right and you're wrong. That's my channel, so what you gonna do, huh? Sue me. The main difference between musketeers and zombies is that musketeers are ranged units, which can, surprise surprise, fire their muskets. Zombies, on the other hand, are melee units and need to get close to their target first, which might prove difficult due to their incredibly slow move speed. Despite that, zombies still have a rotten card in their sleeves. Whenever they actually manage to unalive another soldier, not only that guy gets insta-killed, but also is then converted into a respectable member of the zombie community, usually triggering a chain reaction as well. I think that's enough for an intro, but you can find much more by watching the previous episodes in the series, so enough talking and let's start the training. At the beginning, we will have one... Oh, lol, okay, okay, there you go. So, 10 musketeers versus 100 zombies, and as always, the training starts in the mosh pit. Besides a dope rave edit, mosh pits are also useful for the agents to learn the basic rules of the environment. Everyone is spawned in closed proximity, resulting in a higher chance that your frantic actions will actually hit an opponent, leading to a reward and a faster learning process for our AI. Being spawned so close together is also very beneficial for the zombies, since they are melee units. As you can see, most of the human population is eliminated rather quickly, leaving one or two survivors that desperately fight for their lives. It reminds me of that scene from Walking Dead, where the main characters covered themselves in zombie guts to hide their human smell, allowing them to walk past the infected. After zombies have secured 5 wins, I have split the two teams apart, which now should benefit the musketeers. That being said, I've turned the friendly fire on for the musketeers, so they're still at the find out phase that unaliving your teammates might not be the best strategy for survival. Several rounds later, and we can clearly see an attempt from zombies to push towards Team Red, but musketeers are holding their ground. Also, there is significantly less friendly fire going on, so good job guys! A few hours later, and humanity was able to secure their first victory, completely annihilating the entire zombie army. This experience didn't go to waste, because few moments after this victory, musketeers got rid of the zombie plague once again. What is interesting is that musketeers started using a different strategy. Rather than holding their positions and waiting for zombies to slowly crawl towards them, Team Red started pushing themselves, which honestly didn't make too much sense when I first noticed this. 
I mean, musketeers are literally punished for getting close to their opponents, so that didn't make any logical sense, but I think I might have an assumption on why it actually happened. You see, each round has a time limit. In my case, it is 600 seconds, so 10 minutes. Once this time runs out, the environment resets and next round starts. This timer is added to avoid infinite rounds where your agents are pointlessly wandering around. In theory, that is a good idea and I've used it in most of my projects as well. However, the musketeers have realized that if they just wait for the zombies without moving, they will be able to eliminate much fewer enemies compared to the amounts they could kill if they were also pushing, mainly because of the shooting range. Or so I thought. I started paying closer attention to the training process and that's when I noticed this. Um, yeah, apparently this cool post-apocalyptic map that I got has some issues with the tile colliders resulting in some zombies getting stuck in the ground. That is also the reason why the musketeers had to get closer in order to unalive all the zombies. Initially, I tried solving the issue the easy way by ignoring it. Unfortunately, zombies kept getting stuck in the same place, confusing the musketeers, so I decided to increase the size of the problematic collider in the hopes it will magically work, and it actually worked. Kinda. Now, the zombies can freely move here, but are getting stuck in a different place. Okay, Increasing the size of the collider by a little didn't work, so I had to come up with something different. Increasing the size of the collider by a lot. I basically did the same thing, but across the entire map. My logic was simple. If there is only one collider, you can't get stuck between them. Well, surprise surprise, my solution actually worked. I left them trained for a few more days, hoping that musketeers will forget the bad lessons about pushing. And after more than 100 hours of training, here is the final result. For our first challenge, we'll have only 50 zombies against 10 musketeers, so it should be a piece of cake for our fellow humans. The musketeers are pushing in a unified formation towards the center of the map, simultaneously dropping zombie after zombie, resulting in about half of Team Green getting eliminated in the first few seconds. Musketeers are not advancing any further, holding their positions in the central part of the city, right next to the parking lot. Here, all the enemies are in attack range, making it easy for musketeers to hunt down the remaining zombies. Meanwhile, this little dude is trying to stick away from the fight. Well, looks like an easy win for Team Red, so let's make it more difficult for these dum-dums. How about 10,000 zombies fighting against the same 10 musketeers? Yes, yes, technically there are only 500 zombies at a time, but once one of them is un unalived, a new one is spawned. So technically there are 10,000 zombies, but also my PC doesn't have to melt while recording. Since there are so many enemies, I've sped up the video a tad bit, otherwise we would be watching it for eternity. Pause this video right now and let me know in the comments, who do you think is gonna win? Zombies or the Musketeers? Musketeers are starting strong, getting close enough for them to reach their enemies, but not too close. You can see them assemble in the line formation, which I assume is so they don't accidentally hit one of their bros. So far, 100 zombies have been eliminated, which means that on average, one musketeer got rid of 10 zombies. I'm not sure why they decided for this horizontal line formation, but so far it seems to be working. Despite heavy pushbacks, the zombies are slowly gaining territory, getting closer and closer to their prey. It's nice to see how musketeers are prioritizing the closest enemy first. They did learn something after all. Musketeers manage to repel a big wave of zombies, giving themselves some room to breathe, while a huge chunk of the undead are stuck near the yellow car, or I guess moving really slow. This allows team humans to strengthen their positions with a total body count of more than 300. Ok, let's speed up the video some more, so we can better see the dynamics on the map. The zombies manage to regroup in a huge wave and are moving towards the musketeers. 
I'm not sure if they will be able to stand their ground this time. Yep, it looks like these brave soldiers also realized that and started retreating. Smart move if you ask me. They're much faster than the zombies, so technically as long as they're on the move they should be relatively safe. However, they seem to have settled next to this rusty car, attempting to regain some of the lost territory. Except of this dude. This guy is done and doesn't want to deal with any of this bullshit anymore. He is now on his own adventure, or he might be distracting the zombies on himself so that they follow him and leave his teammates alone. This Pogo is a freaking hero! It doesn't seem to work though, because the rest of the group is now being pushed further back. Despite more than 700 zombies killed, there are still more than 9000 to go and they are going strong. Oh no! Looks like our hero was too distracted on the zombies and has gone a little too far, smashing right into the invisible wall. Yeah, I made four invisible walls around the perimeter of the map so that the soldiers don't just wander forever and instead are motivated to fight. Well, that's really sad, I guess there is only one way to properly commemorate the sacrifice made by this brave Pogo Musketeer. The only thing he would love more than his own virtual life is for you to smash that like and subscribe button. <clears throat> Meanwhile, the Musketeers are already on the other side of the road, desperately fighting for survival, but the zombie horde looks unstoppable. Since there is this car here and the bus on the other side, the only logical option for the zombies is to push between the two, which results in this dense army. I'm not sure whether that is beneficial for the musketeers because it's easier to aim when opponents are clustered together, or if it actually is more difficult because there is a larger amount of enemies packed in a small area. I've sped up the video some more and we can clearly see that despite musketeers retreating, the zombies are unable to cross further than the first half of the street. Humanity is doing a really good job so far and managed to eliminate more than 10% of the entire horde, meaning on average one musketeer got rid of 100 zombies. That being said, I'm a little scared they will soon reach the other invisible wall and we all know how that can end. Yep, that's what I was talking about. Instead of moving to the north, where is plenty of space, this dude ran right into the wall. Well, at least it's just him. <clears throat> okay, so we have a total of 5 musketeers that committed Sudoku and smashed into the wall. By the way, while the walls are invisible for us, the agents can still see them, so it's not like they blindly stumbled into them. The remaining 4 soldiers are currently hidden by the minimap, but don't you worry, they won't let their teammates down. Yeah, they were doing so well. I actually thought they stood a chance, but that goddamn wall. You know what's even weirder? So I've also tried scaling the simulation up by 10, having 100 musketeers fight with 100,000 zombies, but the results somehow were much much worse. Despite having a similar start, the musketeers kept pushing further and further without any concerns that it might end up really bad. All of them, well maybe except of this guy, I don't know what he's up to, maybe he makes sure nobody retreats and abandons their positions. Anyhow, almost all musketeers were advancing forward and it was just a matter of time until this house of cards started to crumble. After the first human was infected, it was basically game over. A good chunk of musketeers have separated and changed directions, moving towards the southern side of the map, leaving the other part of their team to be torn apart by the zombies. Humans are slowly getting encircled from different sides, with every second losing more and more soldiers. After the main musketeer group was disassembled, it wasn't too long until the remaining survivors joined the ranks of the undead. They even got this dude. Lastly, I thought it would also be fun to place them on the rooftop map that you might remember from a previous episode, but this time without training them to fear heights. I thought we were going to see a cascade of falling zombies, but instead we have these 10 dum-dums pushing across the entire plank. 
I'm really confused on why they keep doing that, despite being rewarded for keeping their distance, so if you have any assumptions, let me know in the comments below. Would be interesting to read your thoughts on that. By the way, this is a great moment to thank my Patreon supporters. Spartan King, Red Nugget, LND Place, Andre Schwark, Leonard Averit and Get Pandon. It helps the channel a lot, so thank you. You are the legends. Alright, we are down to one musketeer, but not for too long. That's it for this video, but there are plenty more on my channel, like this episode where I train zombies and musketeers to fight specifically on the rooftop map, where avoiding to fall was a crucial part of the training process. Bye!